Are you able to see the screen, guys? Yeah. Great. All right. So when we talk about security, security is you know not only related to your external security; it is internal security as well. Now, when I say external security, so external security is about the applications. You know what applications you have, how exactly you are trying to get into this uh, area, right? And uh, what things we are planning. So for example, you know, there is a hacker who is trying to hack into Workday. Now those kind of security, we are not going to work on it. Who is going to work on it? It is going to be the uh, Workday security team who will take care of all that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And then we have our internal security team, which will take care of the internal application and all those things, right? So we have two parts in that. One is your data security and the second part is your action security. Now, when I say data security, it is basically your domain security policy, okay? So security is governed by two policies, which we all have to remember. One is called as domain security policy and another is called as business process security policy. Now, when I say domain security policy, it is basically the collection of fields and the restrictions are put on data access of the employees. Okay. So when I say restrictions are put on the data actions or, uh, you know, um, so I'll give you an example. Everybody, wherever they are working, in case you are working, you will be able to see your compensation details, right? That this is my package. This is my fixed number. This is my, you know, um, not fixed number. This is my variable pay, right? So you are able to only see that. You cannot make any changes, correct? You, you want to go ahead and make sure that those numbers are as per what you have got in your offer letter. That's not something different, correct? So if you are able to view that, which means you have view access, you are able to read that, you have a read access, but you cannot go ahead and make any changes to that, which means you have a restriction. But who will be a pe person who can change that? There must be somebody who can change that, right? That could be your HR team, that could be your compensation team, but they can go ahead and change it, correct? Yes, correct. no? Yes. So, which means they have got the edit access, but you haven't got the edit access. How is that possible? That is possible because of the roles and responsibilities that you have in an organization. So for an example, again, you have a sales user, now for a sales user, what is the use of Workday? Why will they use it? We all know that if you are working in an organization and uh, you know, for all your HR issues, you will have to use a HCM system, right? I'm giving you a hint that you can answer this question. So for a sales user, what will be the use of HR system? Or you can say Workday system. What will they do? Uh, attendance okay great wonderful performance management performance management uh, okay performance uh, to report the performance uh, so performance of whom their day-to-day -day productivity day their day-to-day -day work uh, like like or... we have seen the allowances Allowance. okay. allowances okay yeah if they have completed this target then uh, yeah so have to report like they may not report that in workday, but that's fine. What you're saying is also not, you know, wrong, but yeah, that would not be in workday. But yes, performance management will be done in workday. That is the right answer. But what else? In fact, when I give you the example, I give you the answers also. If you are able to understand, then you will be able to answer this question very easily. Okay. Yep, tell me. Hmm. 
anybody guys it's it's very simple i have given you the answer also okay um personal details personal details absolutely correct your dependent details your bank information yeah, yeah. Uh, you know your your uh, benefits all the things you can access in workday right so yeah. for any user understand why exactly they are going to go ahead and uh, use workday is there for hr needs now what is their hr need hr need is all the things basically yeah all the information Telegram. all the information yeah okay but they will not be able to change anything because they don't have that access that they will be able to change those these details okay i hope you are able to understand what i'm trying to say now when you have this kind of restrictions put so these kind of restrictions are put in such a way that whatever your role and responsibility is there in your organization you will get access only till that otherwise you will not get the access so let's say i am a software engineer and i don't have any work related to workday i don't do development in workday i do development in java i will only be as good as a sales user in workday i will also see the same things i will mark my attendance i will apply my leaves i will see my benefits i'll see my personal details and if i'm a workday developer in production i will still not have access to make any changes i can see anything in sandboxes but in production i will not be able to make any changes for anybody so there also i have restriction as a workday consultant also i have restrictions <clears throat> does it make sense guys are you able to understand what i'm trying to say here yes yeah yes based okay. on our role i uh, will get access correct whatever, whatever we require right so the workday consultant doesn't have a uh, change access uh not everybody will have there will be only one or two person who can do it yeah Okay, not everybody. Okay. Okay. So, two parts in security. One is your data security, which I was trying to tell you that there are fields which you will be able to see, which you will be able to uh, you know make the changes, which you will not be able to make the changes because see in personal details you will be able to make the changes. If your address is changing, you are moving from one place to the other. There you will have the liberty that you can go ahead and update the address. Employee, you are talking or HR? i'm talking about employee also employee himself can change yes it. employee can go ahead and change that yeah. address can add is uh, if uh, his daughter and children family details. yeah dependents information they want to remove somebody from dependents then they can do that right mm -hmm. so all those things they can do but there must be a window let's say you have to declare your dependents they will say that okay once in a year it will open and then you can declare it mm -hmm. right i guess so that is like pan card or other that won't be able you you can you can change that i don't think any company would put that restriction that you can change you know you cannot change these things okay. because this is your personal information right but again, what has pan card affects the income tax this thing no? you can change yeah it. but anyways it is your responsibility right to yeah. give the right number pan number and aadhar yeah. number yeah. right you you cannot keep on changing it every day yeah that's right <laughs> right yeah but yeah if you want to change it there will be no restrictions you can do that okay so guys that was all about the data security then comes the next part which is action action means you are performing some activities what activities will you do in work day mark my attendance right submit my time sheet that is an activity so how do we do that there is a business process which will help you to do it so you created a position right yes. how do you do that you typed in the task create position and then you filled in the details and you submitted it and then you saw process successful right this is something you got as a message yeah. yes yes which means those actions were allowed to you you were able to do it only those actions where you got the permission to do that not everybody will be able to create a position as a sales user again you will not have any access to make those changes because those processes are restricted right 
now if i have to mark my leave i should have that excess if i don't have excess how will i mark leave i will not be able to so all those worklets if you remember which i have showed you initially in the tenant that these are called worklets with the help of these applications you will perform your day to day activities so that is for users you your end users which they will use it to perform those activities correct yes yes all right so that is governed by a policy which is called as a business process security policy so any actions that you are doing any activity which you are performing like example is creating any organization job profile compensation those are all business processes and we are using those business processes to create it now in seventh chapter which is the next chapter we will see how a business process is created so that i can customize the processes as per my requirement okay so processes basically means that it is a action you are performing some activity and if you are able to do that easily then you can very well go ahead and make the changes as per the requirement which you have correct i hope you have understood both the type of security data security and action security is there a question on that yes no no doubt okay then comes the next part which is restrictions so restrictions are put on data access of an employee and controlling part of the field and information is defined and that is defined through these policies we will see that one by one another thing is we have to understand the security flows from top to bottom now what do you understand by top to bottom management to employee yeah. it is basically through the hierarchy yeah. hierarchy okay so here i have created a hierarchy let's say i have a technology head sitting at the top maybe a vp and then you have b who is a let's say maybe a senior director yeah. okay and then you have c and g who are senior managers and then d e f are reporting to c so they are maybe team leads or managers and h i j is reporting to g okay and each of these people because we have created a supervisory organization the concept is we create a supervisory organization only for a manager or somebody who has at least one reporting correct yeah so each of them are managers right so let's say d has 10 employees e has 10 reportees f has 10 reportees so 10 10 10 which is 30 right h i j 10 10 10 which is another 30 so c will have a span of 10 plus 10 plus 10 30 plus 3 yeah right so 33 employees are reporting to c same g will have the same thing b how many will be there 33 plus 2 C and G, seven, yes. right? And then the technology head will have thirty-eight because B is also reporting to them. Okay, yeah. so D will have access to some information of their reportees. So, for example, D may be able to see the compensation details. D may be able to see the details of their employees. You know, last experience, all those things. If they are filled in, they will be able to see all those information will be. seen by d similarly that will be seen for e also f also h i j will also have the same access now d will not have access to e's data e will not have access to f similarly e will not have access to d also right and the people who are below them they will not have access to each other's data right, right? yes but c will have access to d e f yes. and the people who are reporting to them Yes. she will have access to hij and the people reporting to them now these restrictions are put through security groups in workday okay so this is a very important concept guys security groups what is a security group so it's a a collection of permissions so you have different permissions 
which is clubbed together in a security group and when you have different things clubbed together in a security group then what happens whoever is a member of that security group they will have the same permissions okay does it make sense yes yes okay so let's consider this sneha is a hr and sneha is aligned to the department of g so when sneha is aligned to the department of g then you have hij hij who are hij hij are managers who are reporting to g so sneha if she has a role of a hr and she is aligned to g's department so sneha will have access to the data of g hij and the people who are reporting to hij right yes, did yeah. you get the point yeah. yeah yes similarly navin who is a hr partner is aligned with the vp now navin will have access to the data of a and navin will have access to all the data of all the employees in this particular hierarchy yes so what indicates it indicates that the security flows from top to bottom you cannot have c accessing the data for b no you cannot okay if they are able to do that that means there is a serious wrong permissions that has got assigned to that security group where c is a part of it clear yes now <clears throat> when we talk about data security so data security is basically dependent upon functional areas guys now when i say functional area we will understand what is a functional area but not right now we will see that later where we will see that functional area we will see that once we have understood the concept of security groups and other parts okay, okay. but in that functional area you will have data which is related to personal data compensation data dependent bank information right so these are all your functional areas and we will see that because there is a specific section for hcm functional area finance functional area work to student functional area we will categorize that and we will see it but we will only look into hcm and then very specifically we will look into the core hcm part and when you give the permissions in work day guys as i stated right the permissions are given on security group so there are only two types of permissions which is related to your data security view and modify you don't have any other permission like i said that you are able to edit the data update the data delete the data right yeah so if you give modify permission all the permissions are given so modify is a very very a uh, powerful permission if you are giving somebody a modify permission which means he or she has all the permissions okay does it make sense yes great in modify you have delete also is it modify means you can create edit delete up, update upset you can do anything suppose yeah. in case if we are doing a modification any correction how about mm -hmm. that the old data will be get saved at the back end or like uh, it will got it will be no if you are if you are making the change right depends okay. upon where you are making the changes okay like uh, i didn't get it like kazana uh, like for example if i am doing some changes in my personal data like um, my that earlier field my ad my address old address whatever like i'm just changing my updating my current address so the old address will be like in the data or like as it will get saved at the back end or like uh, how is that okay let me tell you now let's say you joined as a hr executive somewhere okay okay and let's say after one year or two years you got promoted as a 
senior HR executive. Okay. Now your designation is changing, right? Yeah. So the old designation is not that it will be deleted. It will be there in the job history. Okay. 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 But let's say I have to change a phone number. Okay. Right. So the okay. previous phone number was something else and I changed my number and I'm going to change my phone number in my office. So okay. that data, your previous data will not be saved because that is something, you know, it is, it does not have a history. You will have only audit history that, okay, this data was changed okay. uh, on this particular day. That's how exactly it is going to be. Some organizations do keep an audit, you know, they, they, they will go ahead and do an audit of all these things. So if you are changing the main profiles, things, then that should come under audit, but these are your personal information, right? So the personal information yeah. may not be there in database. It will be captured for sure, but for how long it will be, that depends upon workday because they may delete the data after five years or six years, right? So they can do that. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, so this is about your permissions. Now, another thing is very important part, guys, that I said that the security is given on security groups. The permissions are given on the security groups. So it is not important where you are giving the permissions because you have to only give the permissions on security group. You cannot give it anywhere. And the security is not at all related to your designation, guys. I am a workday consultant. I work as a security administrator, okay? But I will have more permissions than a CEO of the organization. Are you getting my point? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So security is not at all related to the designation. But what is the responsibility, your role that you are performing in the organization as per that the permissions are given. For a CEO, business decisions, they have to take. Not that what application changes that they have to do. So accordingly, permissions are also given. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there are two ways in which your security can be assigned. I mean, these are not only the two ways, but these are two major ways in which your security can be assigned. And Again, as I stated, security can be assigned through the security groups only. So in Workday, there is a typical way. You can't assign the permission on an employee. You cannot give a permission to an employee. You have to give the permission to a security group only. I'm very much specifying this because you cannot forget this. Okay. This is a you know thumb rule of security that I cannot give a permission directly to a user. I will have to give the permission to a security group only. So how that passes on to the user, there is a process. Mm -hmm. And that process is, try understanding this. This is very important. So when you are creating a security group, there are two types of security group, role-based security group and user-based security group. Generally, everyone in an organization will be given a role-based security because you will have a specific role and responsibility, correct? You will have a specific role that you are authorized to work on a particular section. You are authorized to work on a particular section. For example, I am a software engineer. I don't have any relationship with Workday. I will be only given as an end user permissions. I can view the details. I can manage my uh, personal information. I can see my compensation. I can mark my leaves. I can, you know, put my attendance. I can look at my benefits, all those things, right? And let's say I'm an accountant. So I need to do the financial analysis. So in that case, I would need access to the cost centers of the organizations, right? Then only I can prepare the balance sheet. Are you getting the point? So what happens here? Whenever an employee is hired as per their roles and responsibility, a role is created in the system. Okay. 
and that role is assigned to that employee and that role is also assigned to that security group what is that security group where it gets assigned it is called as a role based security group okay so now this role is assigned to the role based security group all the permissions that you have given is on the security group so directly the role is now a part of security group so all the permissions will be inherited by the role and once that role is assigned to an employee the employee indirectly becomes the member of the security group then the same permissions which you have given on to a security group goes to a employee they will be able to perform those activities where the permission has been defined in the security group great did you understand the concept this is the most important concept of workday security and this is followed everywhere you cannot forget it did everyone understand so first of all understand that the permissions are given on security groups yeah second thing is for every employee as per their responsibilities as per their work we create a role okay and as per their role permissions are also given on to the security groups what we do we assign the role to that security group Okay. So once you assign the role to the security group, the permissions are inherited by the role, right? Yes. So once that permissions are inherited by the role, when someone joins, you will assign the role to that person. So what will happen? That person indirectly is now a member of the security group. So whatever yes. permissions that security group has. the same permissions the user also has and a user can be a member of multiple security groups by assigning multiple roles so you can assign multiple roles to one person it is not that you will only assign one role you can assign multiple roles and the if you assign multiple roles that person will become the member of the security group okay does that make sense yes yes yeah. this is very important we cannot forget it 